value of carrying out your fakes. This fake buys him time. You get the, the collapse there by Pitts, and that buys him a little time. This is uh, pretty good coverage by the BYU secondary. Hughes isn't going to win any foot races, but uh, he picks up some yardage simply because of his, uh, his ball handling frees him. Second and four, Wyoming. 9.15 to go in the half. Cowboys in a 7-7 tie trying to break the tie. A quick pass is incomplete. Just uh, looked up and threw it quickly to tight end Matt Swenson. Matt had one hand on it, juggled it, and dropped it. That was just uh, trying to find the hot receivers. BYU was bringing two backers, and it just uh, doesn't happen. Swenson will come out, and Jones comes back in, got the good hands. Jones right. is from South Dakota. I had lunch with him the other day. Quite a young guy. We have our big four in Denver, just like you have it uh, in Salt Lake City, and you get to, to meet with these kids, find out a little bit something about them. Jones is a quality person. Third and four for the Cowboys. Hughes at quarterback. They'll run it. That's driver. He will not get the first down. Won't come close. Hand off to the right side, slanting to the right. But driver was met immediately by BYU Shad Hansen, and he stood him up, so they'll bring in the field goal kicker now. Hansen is a very good form tackler. Reminds me of another BYU linebacker, Craig Bozich. In fact, Mark Lyons on this trip spent a little time with Bo. He's a pilot now. Doing pretty good. I'd fly with Bozich, wouldn't you? Kind of a safe, uh, kind of Take a care of you. <laughs> Here's Chris Midland to try a field goal. He's made seven in a row this year and is now six out of eight. His long kick, 38 yards. This kick will come from the 32, so it's a 42-yard a attempt. Score tied 7-7. Kicking with the win. Drives it up there, and he missed it. I think it was off to the right. So we've had two field goals missed, one by each team, and the BYU defense holds. And with 8.19 to go in the first half, it's still a 7-7 tie. Jack, you look great. New clubs, new shoes, new ball. Well, it's the new me, Bill. New golf game, too? We'll see. It's showtime. Showtime. Hey! Whoa! Maybe a two iron, Bill? Yeah, a two iron. I just don't get it. Well, it's showtime, Bill. And it's not the shoes, it's not the clubs, it's not the ball. It's this latest video from Golf Digest, how to get distance and accuracy. A video? Yeah, anyone can get it, and it's free when you subscribe to Golf Digest. Huh. I'll drive your partner with this half-hour instructional video, free with a one-year subscription to Golf Digest, just $19.77. Call 800-648-9500. Imagine the video and Golf Digest. Call 800-648-9500. <laughs> With just one phone call to Ryder, you can rent one of our new trucks. But with automatic transmission, power steering, a fuel-injected engine, and an extremely roomy interior. Think of it as a luxury car with a very large trunk. Ryder, we're there when you need us. Live from War Memorial Stadium in Laramie, BYU and Wyoming in WAC football, a 7-7 tie. The Cougars first and 10 on their own 25-yard line as Hancock, the uh, quarterback, audibilizes. He's back to throw, throws quickly to the right side, and it's almost picked up. Well, Rex had it, dropped it. It was hanging in the air there, and Paul Wallace had a shot at it and missed it. That's one Wallace will uh, have a dream about tonight. That Man coverage. Six. Oh, yeah. They cross. Kind of a pick play, and this is a touchdown for Wallace. Yeah, he doesn't realize where the football is. He comes in to make the tackle, so at uh, second and ten, and Hancock dodges a bullet here. Second and ten Cougars from their own 25-yard line. Sweep to the right side. That's Willis. Can he get around there this time? He cannot, but he cuts it inside and makes four out of it. To the 30-yard line, Brent Schieffer tackling. Wallace came up. He had contained, refused to uh, let Pilgrim knock him down. They have to cut it uh, short. Here it is, trying to go outside. Watch 70 Pilgrim as he pulls, and there just didn't anything to do. Wallace had contained, so you got to cut it up inside, and Schaefer comes over with a hit. 
Cougars were last in the whack and turnover margin coming into this game with a minus eight. In this game, it's a plus two with a fumble recovery and an interception. Almost gave it up themselves right there. Here it is third and six for BYU. Hancock to pass. Pumps once. They'll sack him at the 25 yard line. Ball goes bouncing free, but the officials say he was already down. Boy, that's John Bruley. He comes in, he weighs 251 pounds, and he had a bull rush. He just put that uh, head down, and drills him. What? Bruley. Bull rushes right there. Look at that. And then he comes in. Pretty good coverage by the uh, Cowboys secondary. Into punt for BYU will be Brad Hunter. And I think they're going to use Hunter now as the punter when they need long yardage, and they'll go with Herrick in the pooch kicks or the shorter ones. He had a 59 yarder the first time. He hit one pretty good the next time. Kicking from the 12. Again, very high. No fair catch. Taken at the 40. And down at the 47 yard line. There's a flag. There's also a flag that goes down. Tell you what happened, Jay. They're going to nail number 19, Eric Nolan, for uh, a clip right there. Bruce Jenny got downfield for BYU on the hit. And Roan was re, uh, returning the punt. 6.43 to go in the quarter. A 7-7 tie, but the Cowboys will get hurt on this penalty. They would have had the ball right at midfield. Coach Tiller. He'll take a block in the back on the receiving team. 10 yards, first down. Well, that's the 10-yard penalty, then, not the clip, but the block in the back. They changed that rule this year. Well, we got 6.43 to go in the first half. The teams are tied 7-7. This is the Blue and White Sports Network. College sports on Prime Sports Northwest don't know where to stop. All the college action on Prime Sports Northwest, where your teams keep scoring. The Cougars and the Huskies go toe to toe in women's soccer Wednesday, October 21st at 9 Pacific. Coming to a volume dealer is beneficial to the customer because when a dealer is focused on volume, the customer is most likely to get a lower price for the car. Uh, I think you'll find that normally. Um, our prices are the most competitive, uh, the most consistently low in the market. And that's why we sell so many cars. It really works. When life's little interruptions slow you down, Scotty's Auto Body and Repair for a quick pick-me-up. Scotty's Auto Body has expanded to carry out complete service and maintenance on all kinds of cars. Our expert mechanics can handle anything from a quick oil change to a complete engine overhaul. And at Scotty's, we treat your car as though it were our own. We won't tell you you need something you don't. Scotty's Auto Body, if they can't fix your car, nobody can. Playing each other to a standstill right now. It's a 7-7 seven, seven tie as the Cowboys take over on their own 35 after that 10-yard penalty on the punt return. Well, BYU is into the secondary right now. They say a Cowboy offensive lineman moved, and that's why I think it's Herget that moved in there. See which way the officials will rule. I thought uh, Van Rokel on the left side moved. Let's see if Dead that's ball true. Foul. Illegal snap on the offense. First and 15. Illegal snap. What'd they do? I thought the Make left tackle make. moved as we look at the rushing stats. Well, we... Uh, we kind of featured the running game at the top. Not much to whistle about. Now the passing's a little different. The Cowboys have the edge there. First and 15 for Wyoming. Cowboys with three penalties for 20 yards. BYU one for 10. And it's first and 15, Wyoming at the 30. Here's Hughes back to throw. Throws it out on the left side. It bounced before it got to the uh, would be receiver. Mitchell covering for the Cougars. And Yarborough was the man they were trying to get it to. Jay, you notice that uh, Ken Schmidt, defensive coordinator, coming an awful lot with Nickel now as a fourth down lineman. Normally he uh, is a backer. They go with the uh, three-man front. This ball is down low. And uh, I believe you'll see the draw here. You know, Eric, this is the last time these teams will play for three years. Two yeah. years. The next year, the next two years after that, the way the WAC schedule is, they don't play each other. 
Well, with Fresno coming in, let's see if they run the draw. Now, I don't think that's the formation for it. Second and 15, one setback. Two men wide to the left. Now the setback shifts over to the right. And here's Hughes looking to throw. Looks into the middle of the field, throws into the middle of the field, and completes it to the 42-yard line. It's not enough for the first down. Mike Jones, the tight end, caught it. Chad Hansen and Brad Clark tackled it. Once again, five in the pattern as they uh, use motion. Get Terrence Hendricks outside. He was wide open. The uh, coverage just wasn't there. But looks at Hendricks, but instead comes back to the sure-handed Jones. He just runs a very shallow drag pattern. And uh, they need about three for the first. Third down, three yards to go for the first down. Score tied 7-7. Six minutes to play in the first half. Cougars load up the defensive line. I formation. Now they change it, go to split backs. Hughes is going to throw for the yardage for the first down. Throws one way down the field, and it is caught. It's going to be a score. Wow, third and short yardage. And they hit the big guy, Yarborough, for a score. Yarborough's fourth catch of the day. This is a great call, third and short. Looks off a la Unitas, comes back. It's a foot race, and Yarbrough, who really has some ability, beats Mitchell for the second time today. A touchdown on the fade pattern. That's a great call. Everybody has these plays when you have the courage to pull the trigger. Tiller and uh, Larry Corpitz pull it third and short. And Midland kicks the extra point. He's perfect on the season. 20 out of 20 as Yarbrough gets the score on a fingertip catch. Third and short yardage, and they go for it all to get it. Well, I'll tell you what, that Hughes is a pretty good quarterback now. He's close to 200 yards, and he lays this one right on the money. He had, uh, on the season, thrown for just about 1,400 yards, completed 55% of his passes. His uh, efficiency rating is 116.6, which is not that high, but he's been efficient today. 42-yard touchdown, and Hughes is 12 of 18 now for 201 yards. Yorborough's caught three, and he's got a touchdown. So the two uh, players we highlighted, Drage for BYU and Yarborough for Wyoming, each have scores today. This one, a little more spectacular. Oh, yeah. And that was the call of the day. They came out, it looked to me like they changed it at the line of scrimmage. They came out in the eye, and I thought they were going to play fake and throw short. Hughes apparently saw something he liked. They were in bump coverage. He changed it to a, a T set and uh, let him have it. Yarborough leads the whack in receptions per game. So Midland kicking out. The kick will come back to BYU to Christensen at the goal line. To the 5 to the 10, to the 15. Doesn't make the 20. He's banged down hard about the 18-yard line. And Brigham Young University will take over with a long way to go. Here's a touchdown once again. Hughes looks right, comes back. Bump coverage. No help from the safety. And this is the second time they've gone to Yarborough. They split them out so that the safety really can't help out. And he... Uh, he scores a touchdown as you look at the uh, story. Three plays, 65 yards. Wyoming leading Brigham Young, 14 to 7, 5:40 to play. Cougars have won the last three times they played the Cowboys, but there was a stretch two years ago, uh, two years in a row prior to that, the Cowboys won both and went to the Holiday Bowl for two straight years. In fact, they were undefeated for two years in the WAC. There's a pass up the middle. It's complete, close to the 30-yard line, to Rex the tight end, and BYU has a first down. Kramer covering. Val Edwards has used this play forever. If you take away the curl, they'll go to the tight end. Rex gets out against a nickel package, able to beat the extra back. It's a nice toss by uh, Hancock. Both quarterbacks really heating up. BYU's won the whack the last three years, but the two years prior to that with Paul Roach coaching, the Cowboys were undefeated for two consecutive years in the whack, and no one had ever done anything like that. Well, at least not for a long time. Go back in the days of the Arizona days. Lost to Iowa and Oklahoma State in the Holiday Bowl. Barry Sanders team. Here's a running play. That's Kalen Hall. has got some room this time for five. He's to the 35-yard line, maybe a six-yard gain. And BYU down by seven, trying to move the ball. John Burrow, the tackler. Counter trap. If you watch the Washington Redskins play on Monday Night Football, this is their play. You pull. Look at that Broomfield pull and uh, drill somebody. And Pay is standing out there blocking. and uh, Pretty good game. Four yards to go for a first down. Six-yard run. Second and four for BYU. Cougars with the ball on their own 35-yard line. They're down by seven. 
Hancock quarterbacking for BYU. Straight back to throw this time. Looks, does throw, completes it. A gain of only a couple yards, however. That was to Jamal Willis. And Paul Wallace hit him right away. Uh, Willis had no chance to get moving. Willis didn't go out far enough to get to the sticks. And um, Norm Chow, I'm sure, will tell him about that. Got to be aware of where you're at on the field. So uh, need a couple here with third down. And it's kind of an in-between play. Do you run it or do you throw short? Third down for BYU. They need three yards for a first down from their own 36 with 4.07 to go in the first half. Two split backs this time. Hancock's going to throw for it. Looking. Does. Completes it. To Hall coming out of the backfield. He's got the first down. You know, Wyoming knew what they're going to do. It's a, uh, it's a formation where you split your backs that you're going to run the circle when it's third and three. And yet, the athlete is able to beat it. Here it is. Circle pattern. Willis is coming out of the left. Hancock looks right. Comes back. Gives him something he can handle. That's a nice effort there by both people. Tom Kramer pulled him down. Brigham Young with the first down on the Cougar 41-yard line. 3.45 to go in the half. BYU trying to get downfield and tie it up. They're down by seven. They let, or they trailed seven, nothing tied it. Now the Cowboys are back out in front. 14-7, shotgun. Direct snap. Hancock has it. Looking, throws it downfield. And it's caught at the 40. And to the 32-yard line, that's Eric Draves. A big play man for BYU. Junior Marcellus wrestled him out of bounds. That's as wide open as the BYU receiver has been today. And Drage has the uh, the ability to do that. Five in the pattern. The uh, front five protect him too. Look how wide open he is here, Jay. Well, I'll tell you what. Watch the straight arm here. Now this is a guy who likes combat. <laughs> See, I like guys like that. And I'll tell you what. Marcellus, the defender you <laughs> Junior didn't back down. He used the sidelines to force him over there. First and ten, BYU and the Cowboy 32. Here's Hancock to throw again. Does throw downfield. Tipped. And incomplete. He was going to Nadi Valdez that time, but it was tipped by a linebacker. There's also a flag down on the play at the line of scrimmage. Well, what an effort that time by uh, Jared Teal, because that thing looked wide open. Valdez had a lot of room. We have three minutes and 18 seconds to go in the first half. Wyoming leads 14 to 7. Let's see if Joe Tiller wants to take this penalty, thinking uh, push him back in case it comes down to a field goal. They'll turn it down. Hancock is 9 of 17 now for 137 yards. He had completed four in a row until that last one. So BYU will have a second and 10. Wyoming had the choice of making it second 10 or first and 15, and they took the down. 3.18 to go in the half. Hancock for BYU with split backs. Otis Sterling wide to the left. Hancock dropping straight back to throw. Steps up in the pocket. Rolls to his right, throws it, incomplete. Kalen Hall at the 30-yard line dropped the ball. Well, that ball was right on the money. Hall just uh, unable to, to come up with it. I thought they might go to Rex. He had an inside release lined up in a flex position and drifted down the middle, but Hancock, when he was flushed, goes to the running back. Cougars face third and 10. That stops the clock with 3.11 to go in the first half. They're on the Cowboy 32-yard line. Hancock. With three men to the right, Nowatsky, Valdez, and Drage, and he'll run from the shotgun. He's had good protection in the game. The snap, he's got it, looking the field over. That's Hamuli. Throws it way downfield, and it is almost intercepted. It's incomplete. Nadi Valdez at the goal line was waiting for it, but Paul Wallace stepped in front of him and almost picked it on. Well, this is the reason people around here are so high on Wallace. At times, he just has a sensational ability. Watch the effort here. I thought they might go to Hamuli, who uh, had drifted open. This ball hangs just a little bit, and Wallace steps inside. Well, they'll turn it over to Lauder. Here's Hancock, who uh, doesn't get to see the end of this thing. Lauder's going to try a field goal. He's missed one in the game. He'll kick it from the 39. 49-yard attempt, and not much in the way of win. Some. Here's the kick. It's low. And off to the right, so he missed it. So the Cowboys stop him with three minutes to go in the first half. Wyoming takes over after BYU had a drive moving, but they uh, can't get it into the end zone or can't get the field goal either, and it's still 14-7. Lauder's now 7 of 13 on the season, kicking field goals. 
Stay with us at halftime as Carlton Wing updates you and scores around the country on the USA Today CNN Top 25 scoreboard. Carlton will also have a special guest, a visit with BYU's athletic director, Glenn Tuckett. That's at halftime of the Blue and White Network halftime report. Cowboys with a first down from their own 32 yard line. Hughes running play, hands it off the left side and tackled right near the line of scrimmage on the sweep is Dana Day, tackled by Dewey Gray for BYU. Gray really runs to the football. Very sure tackler. Really runs well. Never really able to get north and south. Watch, uh, watch the ball carrier here as uh, Day just is overmatched by uh, the angle that Gray has. Each team with three timeouts remaining. There's two and a half minutes to go in the half. The Cowboys have second and ten from their own 33 yard line. They lead Brigham Young by seven, 14 to seven. No setbacks. As the tailback goes in motion, here's Hughes to throw into the middle of the field. He's got Yarbrough. It's complete to the 47 yard line, but there's a flag down at the line of scrimmage. That'll go against BYU. They were offside. Gray Yarbrough, uh, excuse me, Jay. Gray and Hergut were covering. Uh, Yarbrough lines up in the slot and finds the open area. Offside, defense, penalty decline. First down. Now here's the play out of trips. There's the offside by the nose guard, Lenny Gomes. And then Yarbrough in the slot. Well, that's a nice pass right there. This is fifth catch of the afternoon, having a big, big day. Cowboys with a first down on their own 47 yard line. Hughes dropping back to throw. Flips it over the left side. It's cut. That'll be all the way to the BYU 42 yard line where he's knocked out of bounds. That's Christofferson. The running back, Patrick Mitchell, knocked him out of bounds, and the Cowboys have a good passing game, uh, passing scheme going here today. Ryan is out of Glendale, Arizona. He delays, slips out in the flat, and Hughes, who does a terrific job looking one way, coming back the other way. Christofferson has really given him something this afternoon. you got to be impressed with Hughes, though. There to the BYU 40. Three men wide to the right side. They could get another score. There's plenty of time. Hughes wants to throw again. Under pressure, does throw. Incomplete this time. Great covering for BYU, intended for Edmund, who had a hand on it but couldn't hold it. Well, he really got nailed up front, he being Joe Hughes, because I guarantee you, number 93, Scott Sorala, drills him pretty good. Watch 93 right, well, we lose it right there, but uh, pretty tough when you're trying to throw the football and somebody's breathing down your back. Second and 10 Cowboys on the BYU 40 yard line. Cowboys leading 14 7. We now have a minute 50 to play in half number one. Both teams trying to go over 500 in the record in the whack. Here's Hughes to throw the rushes on. They'll sack him this time. All the way back to the 40, well, the 50 yard line will probably be marked down. Somebody coming from the right side untouched, Nathan Hall. Well, so, all right, in your living room, check this out. Nathan Hall has played effectively all year long. And he gets a little help with the rush here from Randy Brock, 97. Hall and Brock with the, the big hit takes takes him out of field goal range. Timeout for, I believe Wyoming calls a timeout. Yeah, Cowboys call a timeout. So BYU brings the entire defensive unit over to the sidelines to talk it over. The Cowboys will have third and 18. I'll tell you who's a nightmare, Jay. Uh, uh, you watch this Yarbrough. He's a nightmare to cover. Sure is. Be sure to be with us two weeks from today as BYU will be back home in Cougar Stadium to host national power Penn State. Uh, join us for a big Halloween matchup as BYU clashes with Penn State. They played last year uh, back at Penn State and the Nittany Lions won a pretty good margin. Oh, it was a very good first half. But in the bowl game, the Ty Detmer when Ty was playing uh, the year he was a junior, that's one of the best college football games I've ever seen. Terrific BYU game. Penn State. Tell you something, Penn State, I thought had... Uh, Miami and there's a guy who grew up a couple hours from here had an interception a guy by the name of Darren Krein that uh, changed that ball game around totally Penn State could conceivably have been coming into uh, Provo in number one but not after losing that close one so join us in Halloween BYU and Penn State two weeks from today on the blue and white sports network Ken Schmidt the defensive coordinator had a nice call on that last one as he uh, let Nathan Hall play sick him. Linebackers like that, Jay. They like to get that call. <laughs> People call a red dog. Their eyes light up. Sick him is what it is. Uh, Yarbrough's in the slot. For those of you who like to follow what Ryan does. Third and 18 for the Cowboys. It's marked down on the Wyoming 48-yard line. Here's Hughes to throw into the middle of the field. Nice catch, but it's not enough for the first down. Who'd that, he go to? That's Yarbrough. <laughs> Yarbrough. I tell you what they do. This is really well thought of. 
trips right, send a man in motion the other way. That means that the safety is out of it. That's a pick play. You might get called for that one. And coming over and making a hit is Herget, or else there's big time running room in the middle. Well, the Cowboys have fourth down then. Yeah, let's see. They will need uh, about five, maybe six yards. They'll need six yards for a first down on the BYU 36. So we're looking across the field as they talk things over with the offensive coaches. We'll see if the quarterback comes out there or the field goal kicker. A minute 29 to play. Now BYU brings the defensive unit over to talk to the defensive coaches. Ken Schmitz there, Tom Ramage and others. Tell you one thing, Jay, if they bring the quarterback back on the field, I'll bet you every guy on that BYU sideline is yelling, watch the fade <laughs> if, uh, if Yarborough lines up on the left side. Well, the Cowboys started back onto the field. It is Hughes coming out there. We have a minute 29 to play in the first half of the football game. And the Cowboys lead the Cougars 14 to 7. They're on the BYU 36 yard line. Hughes had a good game, 254 yards here in the first half. Hughes starts back off the field, gets uh, further instructions. Here's the BYU defensive unit out there. I'll tell you, Jay, they throw it better than Fresno did last week, and Fresno was very, very effective with the passing game, but uh, Hughes has used them all today. Okay, here's the fourth and sixth play for the Cowboys. One man wide to the right, one to the left, one in the slot on the left side, one setback. BYU showing blitz. And they are after him, and here's that pass down the sidelines. Yarborough, has he got it? He has. He's at the 13-yard line. Derwin Gray covering, but Yarborough made the catch under pressure, and Hughes got it to the right spot. Five under, two deep. McCullough has the assignment. They have thrown this fade perfectly, this time to the right side, and only the safety coming over saves the touchdown. Watch Yarborough. We isolate on him, runs past the freshman, Boy, I'll tell you what, he accelerates, makes the catch, and then gets drilled by Gray, but they're in great shape here. First and 10 on the 13, and on the first play, Hughes just steps back and throws the ball to the turf. A uh, play that became legal a year or so ago to stop the clock. So the Cowboys take over, or will have the ball, with a second and 10 on the BYU 13. So now they're looking at a possible six. And if not, they're in good shape for their field goal kicker. Jay, when you come up and bump at the line of scrimmage, or press as a lot of coaches like to call it, you have got to make sure you get your hands on the receiver. You've got to get a pass rush. All of it must be coordinated. Second down call. Hughes looking. He's got some time. Into the middle of the field, and it was caught down at the three-yard line. Nice getting diving catch by Eric Edmund. And the Cowboys are playing as well as any team BYU's played this year. Without question. And this pass had to be perfect. It absolutely was. Watch where Hughes puts it. A lot of pressure as they bring five this time. And Hughes somehow gets it off. It can't be intercepted. It's either incomplete or it's there. Now they're hurrying. First and goal on the BYU two-yard line. They're going to have to call timeout. I think they, you saw Hughes uh, look over to the left I, like he was counting players. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Maybe they didn't have 11 players out there. So Coach Tiller spends a timeout, but that's not really a problem for them right now, Irv. Uh, 58 seconds to go in the half. Well, I'll tell you what Joe is upset uh, with, the, you know, you, you don't like to see kids get excited and they forget they're supposed to be in the ball game. You think <laughs> she cares? <laughs> I don't think she even knows what a football is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's Joe Tiller. Now, that was their last timeout ever, so they have no more timeouts, but they also need only two yards to get in the end zone. We saw Jim Swinney last uh, week, Fresno State. Joe Tiller, product of that same system, Dennis Erickson, John Smith, the guy at Idaho, Keith Gilbertson at California, the one-back offense, spread it out, create some natural gaps. See what they come up with here. Hughes has been as good as anybody I've seen on this field. There have been some pretty good Cowboy quarterbacks. Well, defensively, they've been giving up nearly 400 yards a game. They've played very well against BYU defensively in this half. So the Cougars bring the defensive unit back onto the field as the Cowboys have... A first and goal situation from the two yard line, and they lead by a score of 14 to 7. Tight formation. Let's see if they play fake. Driver is a setback. Hughes with the ball. He's going to throw it. He's being chased, and they'll run him out of bounds back around the four yard line. There's also a flag down in the end zone. Let's see if they got BYU for holding on the perimeter. That's the call. Cowboys say it's on BYU. 
So that put it on the one yard line. You got line. a flag on the other side, too, offsides. That's on BYU. So the official sighting across the field, 53 seconds to go in a half now. And the Cowboys with a superb opportunity to get in the end zone. Offsides, defense, half the distance, still first down. So it's still first down, 53 seconds to go in the half. Now they're a yard and a half away from the goal line. As Hughes brings his team up again in a tight formation, driver is the middle back, the deep back. Hughes with the ball. He gave it to Driver and he didn't make it. He slipped, Jay. I think he had a touchdown. Hergut falls on top of him. They're trying to hurry. Get lined up. You got to watch out that you don't have a motion penalty. You got to make sure you get a field goal team in if you don't score. 38 seconds. Hughes just fires the ball to the turf to stop the clock. So there are 33 seconds left to play in the first half. And the Cowboys are knocking on the scoring door, but they haven't been able to open it yet. They will have, uh, it'll be third down. If you run the football here, my guess is you run behind 55 Hawkins. He's been their most effective blocker. He's 290 pounds, even though he's only, he's a freshman, a red shirt freshman. The last time they were in this situation and had time to call the play, they ran a, a sprint out, let Hughes get to the perimeter. Okay, here it is. Third and goal from the one and a half yard line. Hughes rolling to the right. Can he make it himself? I don't know. Now the officials say yes. At first, the official on the one side did not give any signal. Then the one to the right said it's a touchdown. Hanson hit him low, and Gray was cleaning up up high. Hughes isn't the fastest guy, but he's so competitive. Now watch him here. They do go to the perimeter, block it pretty good. Here's the hit by Hanson and Gray, and he gets in. Not by much. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't know. One more angle. I want to see another angle here. Hanson hustling over. Gray with the hit. Gray was trying to steal the football. Yep. 29 seconds to play. A flag goes down. As the extra point is kicked, it was good, but there's a flag down on the field. I think BYU is offside. That makes it 20 to 7, and the extra point will count. Yep. BYU offside, so they'll take the extra point. And uh, Mindlin has made 21 out of 21 on the season. And the Wyoming Cowboys have outplayed the BYU Cougars here in the first half. The penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Extra point is good. The extra point is good to make a Wyoming 21, Brigham Young 7. 29 seconds to play in the first half. Remember, this came after BYU had moved downfield. They were stopped. And the Cowboys, using that old uh, final minute that BYU's famous for, moving the ball the last couple of minutes of the first half, but this time the Cowboys did it very effectively. Well, Wyoming, uh, people looking in who, uh, who are coaches, has shown folks how to beat bump and run coverage. You get yourself a Ryan Yarbrough, <laughs> and you throw it to because he has been sensational. They'll play, kick, uh, excuse me, the play hasn't been stopped once today. They'll kick off from the 40-yard line, marking off that penalty against BYU on the kickoff. Cougars have Christensen and Johnston as the two deep men with only 29 seconds left to play in the first half and Wyoming ahead 21 to 7. This would be a big blow for the BYU team has still been looking for a, uh, a bowl this year but they play at Notre Dame next week and then play Penn State at home the week after that. And BYU if they lose they go under uh, 500 that'd be their fourth loss of the year. Not many years that Lavelle Edwards has had a team lost that uh, lost four times. So Mendelin will kick off. The wind blowing right now enough that he'll they'll have to hold the ball. He drives this one very high with the wind, and there will be no return. He kicked it about eight yards into the end zone. So Brigham Young University will take over first and ten on their own 20, with just 29 seconds to go in the half. Pick up this angle here. Hanson comes over. Gray hits him up high. Does he get in before the knee goes down? Looks Ooh. like he. Well, I'll tell you what, it's really close. Sure is. From our angle, the same one as the officials, it's really difficult to see exactly when uh, that knee goes down. First and so 10, right. Brigham Young from their own 20 with 29 seconds to play in the half. And Hancock's going to throw on first down. Looks, flips it over the middle. It's caught. Caught by 
Just enough for the first down, I believe. Christensen caught that one. Marcellus tackled him. Stop the clock to move the chains. A little underneath pattern as Wyoming is dropping seven men extremely deep. They'll give you something underneath. BYU in the hurry up offense with 20 seconds to go. They have a first down on their own 30. Hancock back to throw, throws for the sidelines. Caught. And the official says he didn't go out of bounds. So Drage will call a timeout right away at the 36 yard line with eight seconds showing on the clock. Well, what uh, what you try and do here, I would assume, is try and throw something up close to midfield. This guy's got a good arm. Get out of bounds and then let him uh, throw the Hail Mary to three wideouts. Ryan will come over and visit with uh, the staff over here. Norm Chow is uh, next to us in a booth. Roger French on the field. There's Hancock going back after talking to Roger French. Well, it took. Uh, it didn't seem like it took any time at all to place the, play the first quarter in 13 minutes. At halftime, we'll have the USA Today CNN Top 25 scoreboard, and uh, Carlton Wing will talk to BYU Athletic Director Glenn Tucker. That's at halftime today on our Blue and White Network. But it seems like it's taking an eternity to play the last minute and a half. <laughs> Always seems to uh, to happen that way. Second and five, Brigham Young from the Cougar 35. As the Cougars trail the Cowboys 21 to 7 here. And this could be the last play of the first half. Split backs now back into the shotgun is Ryan Hancock. We've got Tyler Anderson wide to the left with sprinter speed. They'd like to get it downfield. Here's the pass way downfield. Get out of bounds. It's caught. Did he get out of bounds at time? One second on the clock. Well, I'll tell you what, that's a terrific effort. Tyler Anderson got out of bounds on the 34 yard, 35 yard line of Wyoming. And there's one second to go. Anderson, boy, he had to have a clock in the back of his brain here to get out of bounds because now you do have a chance for the Hail Mary. They'll probably put three wideouts and let it go. That's a nice effort by Anderson. They'll call a timeout. No sense saving him. You can't keep him. The ball is at the 35 yard line. Easily uh, reachable is the goal line for this guy. This is the guy with a 95 mile an hour fastball. He'll have no trouble getting it to the end zone if he has enough time. It just depends on what what you want to do. You put three on one side or do you uh, go double wing? And there he is talking to Roger French, the BYU offensive coordinator. Cougars down by 14 points here in the first half of the game as Hancock will come back out. BYU will receive, or at least they have the option to receive in the second half uh, of this football game. The Cowboys won the coin uh, toss, but elected to receive so BYU has the option in the second half. Jay I've seen some strange things happen with uh, the Hail Mary. Very strange things and none stranger than a Minnesota Viking game will watch. You got to make sure if you're on defense now they go with two on each side so that the Cowboys can't stack everyone on uh, on the same side. They're looking for pass interference call or a tip a break anything. And here's Hancock dancing around chased rolling to his right still rolling and throws it downfield it is caught by Haymuli, but Haymuli will be down at the 20-yard line. So the first half will end on that note as the Cougars do get some yardage, but they don't get any points. And at halftime, the Cowboys from the University of Wyoming lead the Cougars from Brigham Young University by a score of 21 to 7. BYU, the country's quarterback factory, has produced an amazing string of seven record-breaking passers. But it wasn't until 1990 that the Heisman was awarded to a BYU quarterback. Now you can capture this proud chapter in BYU's history with the official Ty Detmer Heisman medallion. Authorized by the Downtown Athletic Club, one side features a three-dimensional image of the Heisman Trophy. The other, a sculpted image of Ty's official Heisman portrait. Crafted by Liberty Mint, each oversized medallion in this first ever series is struck from two ounces of pure silver, individually numbered, then hand detailed in 24 karat gold. The edition is limited to just 15,000 medallions. The retail price is $95, but for a limited time, BYU alumni and their families pay just $79 per medallion. Call 1-800-USA-MINT to reserve your Detmer medallion today. These rare medallions will become prize collectibles and will make great Christmas gifts. Call 1-800-USA-MINT before the edition sells out. Call 1-800-USA-MINT today. 
Expert advice and valuable information are at your fingertips every month in the pages of Field and Stream. From which lures work best to late season deer tactics, Field and Stream is the magazine that brings the outdoors home to you. Call now to get 15 action-filled issues of Field and Stream for only $14.95, a savings of over 50%, and this handsome sturdy field bag free. Be a part of the Field and Stream tradition. Call today to enjoy your free field bag and over 50% savings on America's number one outdoor magazine, Field and Stream. If you enjoy meeting the wilderness on its own terms, here's something to take aim at. The challenge of outdoor adventures, the excitement of outdoor life. Call now and you'll get outdoor life at this great low price and this camouflage backpack free with your paid subscription. Every month, Outdoor Life brings you big game hunting and sport fishing with special regional editions that track what's hot in your area. Call now for special savings and the free backpack. Call for outdoor adventure, for outdoor excitement, for outdoor life. The American dream is alive and well. You'll find the American spirit in the way we work, the way we play, and in all of Shiloh Inn's people, dedicated to offering you affordable excellence in the American tradition of hospitality. A new 92 or a new 93 Ford, it's your choice, but the deals are at Gresham Ford. Over 350 new cars and trucks ready for immediate delivery. These new extended length aero stores with seven passenger seating, V6 engine, tilt cruise and factory air, all at $4,000 savings. New 92 F-250 pickups with XLT Lariat trim, factory air, power windows and locks, cruise and tilt, all at $12,992. Pay $217 per month with 20% down. That's Brian Bickmore's Gresham Ford, where we rent cars for $15 per day. their squares dug in deep for the BYU Cougars. 21 to 7, our halftime score here in Laramie, Wyoming. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Carlton Wing. This is the Blue and White Sports Network's halftime scoreboard show. Let's go now to the USA Today CNN Top 25 scoreboard. And when we talk about streaks, we've talked about that a lot so far this season. Number one, Miami has had a lot of streaks there uh, and talking about streaks they've had 53 wins in a row versus unranked opponents Texas Christian is uh, coming up in about uh, half an hour they kick off there going to the Pac-10 number two Washington uh, it goes to Oregon traveling now to the Big Ten Indiana hosts number three Michigan Michigan has not lost a conference game since 1990 last one to Indiana in the Southwest Conference Texas A&M hosts Rice a little bit later on a big one in the Southeast Conference number five Alabama travels to Tennessee Tennessee trying to avenge themselves from last week's loss to Arkansas Alabama has the number one defense in the nation they their first half scoring goes 101 to zero they have not allowed a point in the first half of play going to the ACC Florida State uh, travel to Georgia Tech and in the Big Eight uh, one of interest here in this part of the country uh, 23 conference games in a row, a row is what Colorado has claimed so far in the Big 8, they will go with Coy Detmer, who will replace the injured Cordell Stewart as they host the Oklahoma Sooners. One of the big games here in the fourth quarter, Boston College is trying to pull off the big upset, 35 to 33 over Penn State. Arizona hosts, uh, or goes to Stanford a little bit later on, and uh, number 11, Georgia, over Vanderbilt, 27 to 20. Syracuse over West Virginia, 20 to 17 in the fourth period. North Carolina, 27 to 7 in the third period. Mississippi State travels to South Carolina a little bit later on. Clemson, 14 to 6 in the third period. North Carolina State will go to Virginia Tech in the Big East battle, and UCLA will be at number 21, Washington State. Quarterback Drew Bledsoe, he gets nearly 300 yards a game, but the Bruin defense only allows 140. Should be an interesting battle. Number 23, Florida losing to Auburn in the Southeast Conference, 17 to 9. That is in the third period. And it, uh, number 25, Kansas is and at Iowa State in the second period, 21 to 7 is the score there. Now, no one in the WAC uh, made it again into the top 25, but we do have six teams that are knocking on the door, including BYU, who you're seeing here today. Idling it out this weekend, number eight, Nebraska. They are getting ready for Missouri. And number 12, Notre Dame, they'll be getting for BYU next week. Coming up when we return, we'll talk with BYU Athletic Director Glenn Tuckett right after this. Our halftime score is 21 to 7, Wyoming ahead of BYU. This is the Blue and White Network.
it weren't for Washington's public schools, I wouldn't be your attorney general and I wouldn't be running for governor. I want today's children to have the same opportunities I did. That means making sure that children who want a good education can get one. Bringing back open admissions in our community colleges and universities and keeping tuition down. That's what I believe in and that's what I'll fight for. are going to be all over the screen this season. Catch all the action of every game as the Cougars prowl the Pac-10 on Prime Sports Northwest. The Cougars trek south for a battle with the Trojans Saturday, October 24th at 9 Pacific. Coming to a volume dealer is beneficial to the customer because when a dealer is focused on volume, the customer is most likely to get a lower price for the car. Uh, I think you'll find that normally um, our prices are the most competitive, uh, the most consistently low in the market. And that's why we sell so many cars. It really works. Scotty knows from experience that the daily commute has its ups and its downs. Scotty's Auto Body, the unibody specialists. We're properly equipped to repair today's imports and domestic cars with the latest technology. Not all body shops are also unibody shops. At Scotty's, we are. Scotty's Auto Body, if they can't fix your car, nobody can. Once again, halftime at War Memorial Stadium in Laramie, Wyoming. The Wyoming Cowboys 21-7 over BYU's Cougars. Joining us now to talk a little bit about the BYU Athletic Department is Athletic Director Glenn Tuckett. Thank you for joining us today. My pleasure, Carlin. Well, now it's, uh, it's a political season out there, and everyone's giving uh, their political talks. Let's give kind of a, a state of the athletic department address here. <laughs> what, what's, uh, how are everything, has everything going in the athletic department? Well, until an hour ago, it was going great. But uh, we're behind right now, as you know, 21 to 7. But we don't uh, judge every day by the weather and can't judge every game by the halftime score. But things are well. Uh, football's going well. Uh, we've got to come back and have a good second half. We can go on and do a good job against our WAC foes. We have a chance for a bowl. Basketball, we're uh, looking forward to that. And our spring sports are going to be just fine. So I think everything's OK. You've got some good leadership in the athletic department. That's been one of your secrets to success. Of course, Lavelle Edwards, his success, Roger Reed, uh, Gary Pullins with baseball, Elaine Michaelis with uh, women's volleyball. Uh, how do you get this top talent here? Oh, they, uh, they want to be at BYU. As I've said so many times, BYU is terminal. It's a place that people want to come. They get here, they like it, and they stay, as has proven by Lavelle and Coach Robison over the years, Carl Tucker. It's just a great place to be. Now let's look ahead to the basketball season. We've got some exciting things coming up, but uh, first let's talk about something that's going to be new in the Marriott Center, a new scoreboard. Well, yes, we've uh, put in a state-of-the-art uh, scoreboard with video walls. We'd like the people up on the back row to be able to see what's going on, do some replays and have some fun. It'll be very, very attractive. And I was worried that it might dominate the arena, but I've been over there and it's not quite that large, but it will be a, a different look. Well, what are some of the purposes of having the new scoreboard in? Well, the big purpose is to have it so that the people in the back can really see. We're going to be showing the, the uh, game on the scoreboard while it's being played. That'll help with those back rows. Our attendance back there has fallen off the last couple of years. We'd like to do that. And then it's just a state-of-the-art kind of a thing, and we'd always like to have state-of-the-art equipment in our facilities. We've got some exciting players coming back in the fall season. Uh, uh, Ryan Cuff, uh, uh, the, the, the Reed son, is going to be here. Uh, looking forward. And then Sean Bradley will be coming back a year later, so they'll be paving the way, and we'll have a good, exciting, uh, exciting basketball in the Marriott Center once again. Now, I'd also like to ask you about the WAC. We've got a new player. Uh, Fresno State is in. How does that affect things? Well, they're very good, but it affects the, just like right here. I've, heard, I've talked to a lot of people today, and one of the problems with the 10-team league and playing eight league games is that you, uh, you delete one team from your schedule two years in a row, and next year and the year after, it's Wyoming. And we've had a great association over the years, a great rivalry, but that just has to happen. We're not going to play nine league games and take away the opportunities for to play Utah State, a Notre Dame, a Penn State. So we're going to play eight and still give ourselves a chance for three non-conference ball games. It'll be a different look. 
All right, Glenn Tuckett, the athletic director at Brigham Young University. Thanks for joining us again today. We'll be back with the second half right after this. 14-point deficit for BYU, 21-7. to Wyoming leads it. We'll be back in just a moment. Shelly and I were so close, people thought we were sisters. I don't know if I always understood Shelly, but her deafness never scared me away. It just made me want to tell the world about this wonderful person. Knowledge is more than the power to bring out your best. It's the power to bring out the best in others. I have a friend who chose to become a vet because he loves horses. I chose this because I love Shelly. With just one call to Ryder, you can reserve any size truck you want, order all your moving accessories, and arrange for a convenient pickup and drop-off at any of our 5,000 locations nationwide. Does Route 60 run through Phoenix? Thanks. Oh, and it's a 24-hour number, so if you have any other questions along the way, feel free to call. Ryder, we're there when you need us. To achieve your ultimate potential, we introduce Nordic Flex Gold, the newest idea in strength training that is five ways better than Solo Flex. Nordic Flex Gold has linear motion to accurately simulate free weights. Solo Flex uses a less effective arcing motion. Nordic Flex Gold has isokinetic resistance to match your natural strength curve for maximum results. With Solo Flex, the resistance is dictated by the stretch of a rubber band. Nordic Flex Gold's isokinetic resistance also gives you speed. There are no steel plates or rubber bands to change between exercises, so your change over time is up to 40% faster than Solo Flex. Nordic Flex Gold also has an electronic feedback system to measure your performance. Solo Flex doesn't. And best of all, Nordic Flex Gold costs one third less than Solo Flex. Call now to order your Nordic Flex Gold, the ultimate strength training machine for the ultimate body. Well, Irv, in the first half of the football game, you've got to give the Wyoming team a lot of credit for the way they're playing, their game plan. They've done well, but also the BYU team, they're flat team today. Yep, no question about it. Taking a look at the stats and. Uh, this is a terrific day for Hughes. He's only 25 yards uh, uh, short of his all-time high as he has thrown the ball effectively. Uh, nothing wrong with BYU's passing yardage. Neither team been able to rush the ball. Turnovers, a couple for uh, Wyoming, but uh, uh, no, just re really hadn't hurt them as they've played well. Let's take a look at some highlights here, Jay. Here's uh, Wyoming. Once again, they run the football, get a good block up front as they lead on a backer. And uh, Driver is able to get into the end zone. Driver, of course, is the WAC Offensive Player of the Week last week and gets the first score. Here's the first score for BYU. In fact, it's the only score for BYU. And it's uh, it's Drage working his way free, and, and Hancock hit him for the score. One of the plays that really hurt BYU and was a big A to Wyoming is this play right here. This is the fade. Now, Yarborough, best, uh, his best career day ever, 218 yards. He's almost there right now, and he beats Patrick Mitchell on the fade pattern. Every time they've lined him up wide and thrown to him, it has been very, very effective. Here's the last touchdown as Hughes dives into the end zone. Time was running down. They sprint to the perimeter, uh, pass run option, and uh, once again, barely in, but good for a 21-7 lead. And so it's a 14-point edge for the Cowboys. They're playing their best game of the year. They're trying to go 2-1 and one in whack play and move ahead of BYU in the standings. We'll be back in just a moment with the kickoff of the second half. Property owners, if you want to clear overgrown areas, you could struggle with a shaky sickle bar mower like this or with a handheld brush cutter like this. Or instead, you could cut tall grass and weeds, bramble, sumac, even hardwood saplings up to one inch thick with the amazing DR Field and Brush Mower. The Field and Brush Mower chops most everything it cuts. There's no tangled brush to trip over or to pick up. And those big self-propelled wheels roll right through ditches, over bumps, and logs with ease. The DR is not for your lawn. 
but what a job it does with meadows, roadsides, fence lines, walking paths, and woodlots. You can clear and maintain them all with a DR every few weeks, once a season, whenever you want. A big color catalog is just $2. Call toll-free 1-800-346-4500. That's 1-800-346-4500 for your big color catalog all about the amazing DR field and brush mower. It's showtime. Showtime. Hey! Whoa! Outdrive your partner with this half-hour instructional video. Free with a one-year subscription to Golf Digest. Just $19.77. Call 800-648-9500. Imagine the video and Golf Digest. Call 800-648-9500. Saturday, October 31st, National Power Penn State rolls into Provo, Utah for a Halloween showdown with the BYU Cougars. Joe Paterno's Nittany Lions are in the hunt for a top 10 finish and primetime bowl action. But BYU's balanced scoring machine is looking forward to treating Penn State to a few tricks on the Cougars' home turf. Penn State clashes with Brigham Young. Saturday, October 31st on the Blue and White Sports Network. It's college football big time. Jamons and Herb Brown were ready to go with the second half of the game today from Laramie, Wyoming, and Brigham Young University and the University of Wyoming. And the Cowboys have the edge by 14. They're leading 21 to 7. BYU should receive to open the second half. Next week, Brigham Young University on the road. They'll play Notre Dame at Notre Dame. And uh, the Wyoming team next week, see, they play at Colorado State. CSU was uh, leading the Air Force at the academy by eight as we uh, heard Carlton. Herb, when, and too, when you're in the whack, you know, you you hear stories that uh, this team doesn't like that team and things like that. Yeah, right here, Wyoming likes to beat BYU. There's no doubt about it. And you know, what I'm leading up to, though, Wyoming and Colorado State don't particularly like each other, right? <laughs> I saw a ball game once where they had a fist fight as you take a look at the uh, <laughs> before stats the game before started. the game. Uh, Sark Arslanian brought everybody out. They were captains, and three guys came out, one guy from Wyoming. He They've wouldn't done take a lot anything of things, uh, yeah. anybody. It's a tough game. One year there, or maybe, I'm, in fact, I've seen that, I think, twice, where the Colorado State team was not on the field when the game was ready to start. And suddenly they came down out of the stands <laughs> and onto yeah, the field. Really, that was Sark's ball club. <laughs> so the, that, that'll be a big one, Wyoming and Colorado State. The Rams win today. They'd be even in the whack, uh, two and two. Midland will kick off. BYU with uh, Johnston and Christensen, the two deep men. They're each at the one yard line. So here we go with the second half of the football game. The Cowboys won the first half by a score of 21 to 7. Here's the kick. Drives it about uh, well to the one yard line where it is taken there by Christensen. He's to the 20. Reverses a bit. Spins his way to the 25 yard line. Brigham Young will take over first and 10 on their own 24 yard line. There are two things that are very similar about basketball and football. And that's what happens the first few minutes of uh, the start of the second half. This is very important if BYU is serious about getting back in this game. Well, they didn't do anything with their running game. MP, Edwards, Pay, Pilgrim, Broomfield up front did a fine job protecting uh, Hancock in the first half with his passing. They split three men wide to the left on first down, and Hancock's back to throw on first down and does throw on first down, and it's incomplete. Overthrew Drage. He may have thrown that one away, though, because his cybering was covered. The pressure was coming up front by uh, Tyrone Williams, who's had a big ball game. Papillion High School in Omaha, coached by Gene Sur. Did a good job with his pass rush. A little swim technique, got up field quick. John Walsh, the BYU quarterback who won the starting job at the start of the year, is to the point where he is just starting to throw a bit now. Irv, and he still has some uh, uh, ideas he may get back in this year. Hancock was second and ten. Straight back to throw this time. The rush is on. Over the middle completes it. Kalen Hall spins away, and he's over the 40-yard line to the 42-yard line. That's good running. Hancock is hurt. He's limping. Jones is the, I should say, Young is the backup. I don't know if Hancock can go. He is in a, a lot of pain. Watch the lick he takes. This is a great effort running the football. Here's the lick by the same guy we've been talking about, number 87, Tyrone Williams, who's played well for Scott Downing. You also saw Kalen Hall's running ability after he caught that one. Here's the lick. Stays in a, in a football game. 
First down, Brigham Young. They'll run it this time. Willis on a sweep to the left side. This time he's got some running room. He powers his way into Wyoming territory to the 47-yard line. Tom Kramer and uh, Prentice Roan tackling him. A good effort. Once again, continuing to watch Ryan Hancock as he tries to run it off. Here it is. Just the uh, old Green Bay sweep. They block it very effectively. Look at that guard get out and lead. You know, that's, that's Jim a, Edwards. That's a scary sight when you have a guard who weighs 265 pounds bearing down on you and you weigh 195 as uh, Roan does. Tom Young is loosening up on the sidelines for BYU. But, uh, it looks like Hancock's going to be able to stay in there. Out of the shotgun from the 47-yard line. They stopped the play before it got underway. Motion on the left side, Jay. It's just killed them. We played just a minute here in the third quarter. The Cougars with a running first down, a passing first down. But also, uh, we'll watch Ryan Hancock. Now, he hurt his foot in the Hawaii game. It was not an ankle. It was a foot. And he may have uh, aggravated that. Here's Tom, Tom Young. Young. All his brother has done is probably be everybody's all-pro quarterback. Steve Young has been sensational for the 49ers this year. You hear less and less talk about we got to have Montana because Steve Young has stepped in and done the job. There's his brother. Tom Young says sometime they will say just the opposite, that Steve is his brother. <laughs> well, time will tell on that one. <laughs> First and 15, Hancock throws. Complete to the middle of the field to Drage. To the 40-yard line, not enough for the first down, but a good gainer for BYU. Well, BYU has come out and uh, done a terrific job. They've taken the football from the 23-yard line. Here it is, a little curl pattern to Eric Drage. Notice Hancock having a little trouble setting up. The protection is good. Beats the coverage. The linebacker drifted back. Telich uh, makes a swipe at it as you look at Lavelle Edwards. Need about three here. Kenny Johnson tackled him. Second and three for Brigham Young. They'll run it. Sweep. Left side. That's Jamal Willis. Jamal will be thrown for a loss to the 41-yard line. There's also a flag down in the backfield. Brent Schieffer made the hit on Willis, but there was a flag down. Another kid from Omaha. This is sophomore. This goes against BYU. Eric Rage is talking to the official about it. You're in good shape, and you just kill yourself with a penalty. Cougars felt, uh, you could tell from Drage that it was legal. All he had his hands out in front pushing. Illegal block in the back. What's well, in the back, though? Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still second down. So the Cougars hurting themselves with the penalty. What oh, Schieffer come up and make the play. Boy, I'll tell you what, he's played well. Refuses to be blocked. Edwards is out there in pretty good shape. He just does his job, makes the play. Nice effort. Cougars have second and long yardage instead of second and short yardage. They're back on their own 46 yard line now, and it's 17 to go for a first down. See if the formation helps you here. Let's see if they circle one of the backs. Hancock drops back to pass. Good protection. Pass is knocked down at the line of scrimmage. So the Cowboys, after BYU put some life into their offense, now the Cowboys get pumped up and the crowd gets them back up. I think that was John Burrow, the kid from Pinedale, Wyoming. Only a sophomore, 6'5". Here it is. Watch uh, youngster 50 get his hand up, knock it down. Uh, guy he's filling in for, pretty good football player as you look at uh, Burrow. He's filling in for Kurt Whitehead. Probably the best one they have. He's got a neck injury. Third and 17 out of the shotgun for BYU. Cougars trailing by 14. We're in the third quarter. Hancock dropping way back to throw. Fakes once. Gets it off, and it is... What a catch. It's shot by Drage. I'm going to tell you something. All he does is tip the ball, control it to himself, and he gives him a first down. That's the best catch of the day. Why am I not surprised? Watch Eric Drage. If you appreciate athleticism and never give up, look at that. He has no regard for his body, Jay. That's yes. where you take the headgear and the sternum. He doesn't care. He'll get two catches on that one. It's to the 34-yard <laughs> line. First and 10, Brigham Young. They had about three more yards than they needed. On that one for the first down. Hancock up over the center. BYU trying to get in the end zone. Here's Hall. Nice hole, but it closes in the secondary quickly. Open to the line of scrimmage, but uh, Junior Marcellus came through and brought him down. From Miami, Florida. I tell you, that's a great play. That thing had running room. That looked like it was going to run forever. And Junior Marcellus, who went to Scottsdale Junior College, closes it up suddenly. Watch Junior. Look at here. Look at the room. They get the trap right there, and Marcellus comes up. Boom. 
Brigham Young with a one yard gain second and nine for the Cougars on the Cowboy 32 yard line. The Watskis put wide to left back there three men wide to the left. Hancock a quarterback one setback. He's back to pass good protection again does throw drills it it's caught at the 26 yard line it's not quite a first down it's Dre Jukata they were by Teal and Marcellus excuse me Jay they go trips left very difficult to cover all three receivers you usually fly one now watch what Drage does he'll go down they fly Roman and he comes back to Drage I really believe if you're BYU you're in four down territory now I don't think you even think field goal unless you get off schedule and you're uh, you're really long yardage shot on fourth down the third and short if they don't get it my guess is you you shoot the moon and go again Ray just caught seven for 105 yards he's right on schedule they'll run for it Jamal Willis will not get it they tried to go the left side but I'll tell you the Cowboys have just stopped that BYU running game dead all right let's see Teal and Williams it is too far and they'll have to uh, go for the field goal that's a great job by Teal and Williams take a look you only need a yard they just run to the football. Williams has had a big day. Tyrone uh, has done the job. Cougars will try to get at least three points out of this drive. The kick will come from the 36 yard line. 46 yard attempt by Lauder. He's 0 for 2 in the game so far. 21 7 Wyoming leading. He's kicking with the wind. Kick has the distance, and it's good. So BYU gets three points out of it on a field goal by Lauder. And for Lauder, let's see, he is now 8 out of 14 on the year. It's now 21-10, Wyoming leading. With just one phone call to Ryder, you can rent one of our new trucks. But with automatic transmission, power steering, a fuel-injected engine, and an extremely roomy interior. Think of it as a luxury car with a very large trunk. Ryder, we're there when you need us. Why does Snow Country Magazine celebrate year-round mountain living? That's why. That's why. That's not why. And how do Snow Country readers carve the slopes? Like that. Like that. Not like that. What else do snow country readers like to do? They hike, climb, cross country ski, even paraglide. But they don't do that. Snow Country, for year round mountain sports and living. The magazine that gives you ratings on the top ski resorts, how to ski better and look better. Test results on the latest ski and sports equipment. Just about every year round mountain interest possible. Except that. Call now and get eight issues of Snow Country, a full year subscription for just $10. You'll also get absolutely free Find Almost Anything, a must for Snow Country people. And you'll get our popular Scenic Mountain Drives Guide also free. Call 800 544 6100. That's 800 544 6100. Well, we used just about five minutes of the third quarter, and BYU gets a field goal out of it. Now Lauder will kick off of the Cougars with Edmund and Roan back deep for the Wyoming Cowboys. 10-17 left in the third period. Bosco, Cougar quarterback coach, talking to Dredge and others there. Well, the Cowboys now to get the football for the first time this half, and Lauder drives this one back out over the fence and back up by the scoreboard, so there's no return whatsoever. Is Norton Anderson out there with that left foot? This guy really has a leg. <laughs> University of Wyoming onto the field, and uh, we had an all-conference type performance from Joe Hughes in the first half. Had a very impressive spring for the Cowboys to win the starting position, and he certainly had an impressive first half against BYU. He's 25 yards short of his all-time career passing day. He had 312 yards versus the Air Force Academy. First and 10 Cowboys in their own 20. Driver goes in motion to the right side. Yarbrough is also out that way. And here's Hughes back to throw. And he does throw it way downfield, and it is caught. Nope. Or did he? It is incomplete. <laughs> he had it for a moment, then when he fell down, it landed right in his chest, and I thought he caught it then. But he did not. It bounces free. It's an incomplete pass. Covering was Derwin Gray. Watch Jones. This is uh, Hall, who has to pick him up. And... Uh, well, I, I tell you what, right in the chest. <laughs> yeah. 
Jones gave it an effort. I'll tell you what, it's like an outfielder running and you run on your heels and the ball bounces. When he hit his head on the ground, I don't think he really saw the football coming down. Second and 10 Cowboys in the 20. They'll run it this time. That's Driver. Driver pulls his way forward for five yards. He's to the 25 yard line. So the Cowboys will have a third down call coming. Shad Hanson, the tackler for BYU. Run behind Cody Kelly, Kirk Von Rokel. Rokel was a guard. And tackle now. Third and long. Should throw it. Let's see if they throw the drag pattern to the tight end. They send uh, Yarbrough out to the right side. Edmonds out there with him. Boy, anytime Yarbrough is out wide, I'm thinking fade. No running backs. Third and five for the Cowboys. Uses to throw, does throw, and completes it just enough for the first down. At about the 32-yard line to Yarbrough, covered by McCullough for BYU. So they got what they needed. Yarbrough drove him off the line of scrimmage, turned right at the sticks. Here it is. And the Cowboys have done a great job keeping him off Hughes, giving him the time to throw the football. McCullough with the play, but it's good for the first down. University of Wyoming with the first down on the BYU 33-yard line. Hughes at quarterback. Hughes fakes the draw. He still got the ball, throws it to the right side. It's caught by his tight end, uh, Matt Swenson. And Swenson has about six yards before he's bumped out of bounds by Hall and Hanson. Swenson is an absolute load. And it's just as simple as that. Big kid. They don't throw the ball to him that much. They use him more as a blocker. He's about 255 pounds. Ben Honorable mentioned all whack. You know, he's he a, I'm sorry, Jim. Well, the media guy says he was a high school hurdler. Yeah, at 255. A lot of people thought he'd go to Minnesota or Arizona State. Second and a, four. Obviously, another hockey player living in Minnesota. I'm sure he will. Second and four for the Cowboys from their own 39 yard line. Hughes back to pass again. The rush is on this time. Shoots it down the sidelines, and it is incomplete at the BYU 25 yard line. Covering was Mitchell for BYU. And the pass was intended for Curtis Dewberry. Curtis hadn't done a whole lot this year. That was another fade pattern. Let's see if Mitchell's all right. A little slow to get up. He's hurt. All right, here it is, the end of it. That's well covered by Mitchell, who got burned on a couple of fade patterns early by Yarbrough. He's going to have to come out of there. He put no weight on that foot. Looks like it's his right ankle or right foot. So he is being helped out of the game, helped off the field. Well, I mean, McCullough's in, and what that does is take away from your nickel and dime package. Now, they're probably not going to be able to play it. All right, the Cowboys have the ball. Third down and four. Hughes is throwing for it. Does throw it, and it's incomplete. He had the man wide open, and he missed him. That was Yarbrough, and he missed him in the middle of the field. That might have been a touchdown if he'd hit him. The formation got the safety of BYU out of the middle of the field, and that was a touchdown. Big, big bullet dodged by uh, BYU. He was very upset with himself. He had six. I think you could give Herget some credit, however, because he balled it over right in his face as he threw it. So it made it tough for him to see. That's going to be the key. You're going to have to rush this kid. He is thrown very effectively. You got to stunt. You got to take some chances. Herget will punt from his own 25 yard line. Now 21 to 10, the score. The Cowboys leading. Cougars go after the ball, but they don't get it. Fair catch the signal by Johnston for BYU. He's got it at the 25 yard line, and Brigham Young will take over first and 10 at their own 25. This is the Blue and White Sports Network. If you travel on business around the Northwest, you want to spend less time waiting for your flight to leave and more time with your loved ones. That's why Horizon Air has more flights than any other airline in the Northwest. So you can spend less time here. And more time here. Touching, isn't it? Mister, that's not our mom. Did I mention Horizon Air also gives you a free morning paper? <laughs> paper. Oregon State football is rocking on Prime Sports Northwest. Catch your favorite Pac-10 party animals on Prime Sports Northwest for every game of the season. 
The Beavers party on. Prime Sports Northwest. The Cardinal come to Parker Stadium for a Pac-10 beat with the Beavers Sunday, October 25th at 5 Pacific. Where do you find the best deals on Buicks and Mazdas? Top of the hill. The best deals on Chryslers, Plymouths, Jeeps and Eagles. Top of the hill. How about the best deals on Chevrolets and Geos? At the top of the hill in West Seattle, because Hewling has it. Get great deals on an unparalleled selection of cars, trucks and vans at Hewling Brothers Auto Center. And the service is just great. They treat you like part of the family. Hurry to the dealership that's been serving the Puget Sound area for 46 years. Hewling Brothers Auto Center in West Seattle. Remember, Hewling has it. Patrick Mitchell on the sidelines is trying to walk it off. The way they were working on him, Irv, it may have just been a cramp. That'd be good news. First and ten, Brigham Young from the 25, and Hancock's back to pass. Has the time. Here's the pass downfield. It's caught at the 50-yard line by Otis Sterling for BYU. So the Cougars will have a first down at midfield. Honestly, nobody in the country does it any better than throwing in the middle of the field and getting enough uh, depth than BYU. Nice effort. Otis Sterling goes down about... 18 yards then turns in Hancock right on the money well done Kenny Kenny Johnson was the tackler that last punt by Wyoming was a 36 yard punt Brigham Young with the first down just over the 50 yard line into Wyoming territory trading 21 to 10 as we're in the third quarter Free play. Had movement. Well, which won't way be went. I don't know how they'll call it <laughs> it won't be a free play because I thought Wyoming was offside I didn't see any movement and it appeared to me that uh, the left tackle from Wyoming would get flagged here. Dead ball. False start. Nope. Offense. <laughs> five yards. That's why I used to referee basketball, Jay. <laughs> 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 and you know, you know our man Michael is going to show it. I still didn't see it. Where was there. it? I don't know. 8.20 to play in the third quarter. The Cowboys ahead by 11 points. <laughs> BYU went down, got a field goal the first time they had the ball and stopped the Cowboys. And they had a drive going here and then hurt themselves with a penalty. Like so it's way, first and 15. I like the way Gary Pay was pointing to, <laughs> to the Wyoming kid. Hancock zips it out there. It's incomplete. Incomplete. The ball went bouncing free and the Cowboys had it, but the official said, no, it's an incomplete pass. It looked like he caught it. That's Byron Rex, who only caught the nose of the football. Talich and Johnson covering. I thought he caught the football. Your question would be whether the ground causes a fumble. Or it's a fumble. Let's see if there is possession. No. Nope, he's juggling. That is a good call by the official. <laughs> Should never disagree with those officials, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Second and 15, except in basketball. We can do it then. <laughs> Second and 15 from the 46-yard line. Their own 46 for BYU. Trading by 11. Hancock to pass again. Now does throw it. Completes it in the middle of the field again. This is to the 44-yard line of the Cowboys to Otis Sterling. And Tom Kramer and Jared Teal are the tacklers. That's great presence and patience. Waited forever for that thing to open up. The Sterling get after a little bit. Look at the look at the protection. Waits, waits, and now finally finds his man. Brigham well, Young well will face third down and four yards to go for a first down. Maybe five. Third and five for the Cougars on the Cowboy 44-yard line. BYU trending 21 to 10 in the third quarter. Hancock looking for it. Here's the pass. Knocked away and almost intercepted. Hancock had to throw it in a hurry because he was hit. Junior Marcellus cut in front and he almost picked that one off. It could have been six. Junior Marcellus would have gone 62 yards for a touchdown. BYU will be forced to punt. Here it is. This is a dream if you're a safety. Look at him stay back there playing robber defense and he almost robs him for seven here. Well done. Play was made by defensive pressure up the middle. Hancock had no time. Here's Joe Herrick in, and he'll try to pooch one downfield, get it out of bounds, or stop it inside the 10. He'll kick from his own 41, his first punt of the game. Kicks it very, very high. Fair catch the signal, taken at the 12-yard line. So the Cougars pin him back a bit, and now it's up to the BYU defense to see if they can stop the Wyoming Cowboys. Wyoming leading 21-10 with seven minutes to play in the third quarter.
Clark's putt a 32 yard putt. It's starting to cool off here in Laramie now. And the wind is kind of a cool breeze. First and 10 Cowboys from their own 11 after the Herrick punt. Hughes at quarterbacks played a fine football game. And he'll throw on first down and throws it out in the flat and completes it to Yarborough. And Yarborough is horse collared at the 15 yard line. Good news Patrick Mitchell is back in that tackle by Gray. Vic Tarleton there helping out. So the Cowboys throw and pick up about four in the first down. Here it is, the quick one by Hughes. He's just uh, handled things with a lot of poise today. Short game. Second and five for Wyoming from their own 16 yard line. Three men wide to the left for the University of Wyoming. Been an effective formation for them. But they'll run it. And they won't get very much this time. Running play off to the right. Lenny Gomes for BYU making the hit. And Terrence Hendricks was the ball carrier. He's been injured. And they're hoping, hoping to uh, be able to work him back into the uh, into the system. Yeah, he's got some ability. As you look at Joe Tiller, Joe Tiller and Lavelle Edwards both frustrated by uh, the lack of uh, consistent running today. BYU showed some moments at the start of this half. Third and four for the Cowboys, and they put two men wide to the left. No setback. Hughes with pressure up front sets up and throws and completes it for the first down along the sidelines to Mike Jones his tight end Todd Hergen knocks him out of bounds but they get the first down and you have to appreciate the set double tight end no running backs and they just run run off the uh, cornerback here with the wide out and let Jones go into the vacated area that's a nice play if you take a look at Mike Jones 550 to play in the third quarter. Wyoming trying to control the football, and they've done it quite effectively in this game. They have a first down now on their own 25-yard line. With two men wide to the left, one setback. Hughes straight back to throw. Does throw, and it's incomplete. Off the hands of Eric Edmund. He hasn't missed many passes in this game. He's had a good ball game. This is what he did during the spring, and everybody got very excited. Edmonds a sophomore. He played cornerback last year for them. Then they converted him to the offensive side. Yeah, he was their fifth leading tackler. He was recruited by Michigan and Michigan State. Very fast. Second and ten for the Cowboys from the 25. We're in the third quarter with 5:45 to play, and Wyoming leading by 11 points over BYU. Here's used to throw again. Fakes once, throws it into the middle of the field, and it is. Intercepted by BYU's Tarleton. Tarleton cut in front of Edmonds and picked it off at the 45 yard line. And for Brigham Young, we'll see if this could be something, give them a little spark. It was a turnover to set up their first touchdown. This is one of the few mistakes Hughes has made. He has a man wide open on the post, but he doesn't throw it hard enough. And Tarleton is able to come over and take the floater. Wide open was Edmonds. So a big break for the Cougars. They've thrown effectively in the second half. But only have the three to show for it. Tarleton dinged up a little bit. We'll keep you posted there. Mitchell was back in, but he's still limping a little bit. Now BYU in there offensively. Here's Hancock. He pumps once. He throws way downfield, and it is incomplete, almost intercepted. Try to get it to Drage. Covering back deep was Paul Wallace, who got his fingertips on it but couldn't hold it. That wasn't a good, uh, a good choice that time by Hancock. He pump fakes not very effectively, but Wallace doesn't bite. He stays deep. You can't throw the ball like that. BYU gets a break when the ball is dropped. So the Cougars will have second and 10 in the Cowboy 46. BYU down by 11. They need to cash in on an opportunity like this if they're going to get back in the ball game. Anderson comes wide to the right. Drage out in the slot on the right. Hall is the setback. See if they go to Rex. Rex has a backer on him. Quick one to Drage. Drage gets a block, turns the corner to the 40, and finally out of bounds about the 35 yard line. Might have, now a flag down. Well, it's a late hit out of bounds, Jay, and that's pretty automatic. Jared Teal made the tackle. Yeah, that's the personal foul. Watch Drage. You know, he was hit once and does not go down. If he had not been so close to the uh, out of bounds line, he'd gotten a lot of yards. Here's a guy who played some running back, and you see he likes this. Watch him uh, turn it up, and he runs very hard. See the hit right he there. The he didn't go down. down. He'll go out of bounds, and uh, the flag is a little late, but it's correct. You just can't. You got to lay off. Defense, 15 yards, 
15 yard personal foul on the University of Wyoming. There have not been very many penalties in the Cowboys in this game. Game has been well officiated. There it is. Four in Wyoming. That was the fourth one for 35 yards. Boy, another big afternoon for Dredge. Look at his numbers. Eight, Eight catches, catches, 116. Hancock's now thrown for 295. Joe Hughes, 314 passing yards now, his career best. He had 312 against the Air Force. Tell you what, he'd give back about 50 of those if he could have that toss he, he, he threw just a moment ago that Tarleton picked off. There just wasn't anything on it. He floated it. First and 10, BYU on the Cowboy 20 yard line. Hancock changing the play. He's back to throw. He does throw. And it is caught. It'll be a touchdown. Eric Drage with one of those sensational catches when he just outmaneuvered a defensive back and BYU scores. That was sensational. I thought he might get called for offensive pass interference as there was some Johnson going down. The play was changed at the line of scrimmage, and Wyoming changed himself. They backed off from bump. This ball is underthrown, and just a great individual effort by Eric Drage. Look how well it's covered. But Drage goes up, and you can see he does not uh, have pass interference. They're away from bump and run here, Jay. Comes back, and you see the slip there that uh, really hurts Roan. The extra point attempt is good by Lauder, so Brigham Young University is right back in this ballgame now. It is 21 to 17, just a four point uh, difference. And let's see, Lauder has now converted 22 of 23 extra points on the year. And BYU turns an interception into an opportunity and a score. Well, you know, and, and a lot of times you wonder if you're talking about the right people at the top of your show. We talked about Drage and Yarborough, and they haven't let anybody down. They have been sensational. Drage did it all on this particular drive. He's got two TD passes in the game now and now has 10 on the season. Be sure to be with us two weeks from today as BYU will be back home in Cougar Stadium to host national power Penn State. And Herb, I guess the score we had today is Penn State lost. 35-31 to BC. BC is for real. They certainly are. They're playing well. They've beaten some good football teams yes, so far this year. Uh, so join us then for a big Halloween matchup as BYU clashes with Penn State. Two weeks from today on the Blue and White Sports Network, subject to CFA availability. And of course, on Halloween, Herb will be there dressed as a basketball referee. Yes, I will. <laughs> Scare a few people, huh? <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> Lauder will be kicking off for BYU. Cowboys are two men deep. Lauder has the wind to his back. And so uh, probably will not have a return on this one. 21 17. Wyoming leading Brigham Young kicks a line drive this time and kicks it out of the end zone. That was not high and up in the air but it had plenty of distance. Well I didn't take long to get the end zone right 20 seconds. Remember one of the the interception gave BYU the ball the personal foul really helped set it up. Oh, yeah. Dredge with just uh, two tremendous efforts. Second half Dredge has caught five for 70 yards and Hancock's eight of 13 for 124 yards and a TD. And there's a look at Eric Drage who uh, he just runs such precise patterns and he's got the toughness to make it work in the middle of the field. All right let's see what Wyoming does now. First and 10 from the 20. Drage was averaging 124 a game to be first in the nation with that stat so he's improved on his statistic and here's a pass that's complete. It'll go to the 30 to the 35 yard line. Nice catch by Ryan Christopherson and Vic Tarleton knocked him out of bounds. Christopherson has really been effective with that delay. They don't use him a lot. They spot him there. Watch him come over, fake a block, slip out between the tackle and the tight end. Hard to find a guy. Normally the linebacker gets uh, hung up in other things. That's a good effort, though, by Christofferson. He was a starter for them in the spring. Cowboys with the first down on their own 36 yard line. Hughes has been intercepted twice in the game. Both times the Cougars uh, have used it to their advantage. Here's Driver bouncing off one would be tackler but pulled down by Greg Pitts. Carlton Wing has a report for us. Carlton. On the field today is a clinic put on by the two, two of the best receivers in the country, Ryan Yarborough for Wyoming and also Eric Drage for BYU. Drage, of course, he's uh, leading the nation in passing or in receiving. And then Ryan Yarborough's nearing his uh, career high for reception yards. He always seems to turn it on for the big game, too. He had a good one against BYU last year in Provo. Let's go back upstairs. Okay, Carlton, thank you. Second and nine for the Cowboys from the 37 yard line. They sent a man in motion, so there are no setbacks. Here's Hughes looking to throw right away. 
throws it to the man who went in motion. He'll be dropped for a loss. That was a good a, choice. Yeah, Dana Day who went in motion. He caught the ball in back of the line of scrimmage, and Brad Clark belted him. It just went a good choice, Jay. They've made very good decisions today, and yet Hughes throws one that he, he just shouldn't have. He's got a button hook man on the other side, Edmonds, who is open out of trips. All right, uh, Dick Felt will hustle in a dime package now. And it's third and 12 for the Cowboys from their own 35, leading Brigham Young 21 to 17. Cougars have outscored him 10 0 here in the third quarter. Yarbrough is to the right. This is where they've thrown the fade. He'll have to run it this time. He will not get a yardage for the first down, so BYU has forced them into a punting situation. Lenny Gomes and Greg Pitts tackled him. Good coverage by BYUD. Very good coverage, so this will uh, bring the punt. Watch what they do here as they uh, let it all hang out. Nickel has rushed a lot today. Flushes, got to run, and it's fourth down. Jay, I got to tell you, that last snap from uh, center, and, and I believe uh, uh, the guard is snapping. Cody Kelly really floated back there. BYU looks like they're coming all out. Midland back to kick for the Cowboys from his own 25. Here's the snap. He's got it. Gets the kick away. Johnston is waiting for it. Fair catch the signal. Takes it on a sliding catch at the 35 yard line. So BYU with the football in fairly good field position. Down by four points with 3.05 to go in the third quarter. And the Cougars have outscored the Cowboys in this period 10 0. They've run the ball effectively, and, and yet I'm guessing, trying to think along with uh, Norm Child and Roger French, that if we could just break one draw the way Wyoming is playing it, we're going to be in pretty good shape. As you look at Lavelle Edwards, a 25 yard punt that uh, time. BYU has thrown very effectively to Eric Drage. He has five catches in this half alone. Cougars two to the left, one to the right, one set back. And they'll run it right up the middle. Not very much. Kalen Hall. Kalen Hall's got two, maybe three. John Burrow tackled him. There's Joe Hughes. New career high, 326 passing yards. Quite a game. Yeah, he has really uh, just come out and done the job. There's one thing about that whack schedule. If you're a BYU fan, Herb, you don't have to see Ryan Yarbrough next year. Yeah, that's right. They don't play. Because <laughs> BYU doesn't play Wyoming next year. Second down and eight for Brigham Young. From the 37 off the Cougars. Yeah, we had a mix-up that time. Hancock started back, and the ball was never snapped. We're going to get illegal procedure on BYU. Ryan uh, apparently pulled out early, blaming himself there. Gary Pay had the... Prior to the snap, we have a false start. On the offense, five yards, still second down. So it's still second down for the Cougars, but now they'll need 13. Here it is, pay waiting, and uh, they're just not together. Every, all the linemen hanging on two. They thought it was on three. Maybe Ryan forgot the <laughs> Total passing, BYU 315, Wyoming 326. 641 passing yards in this game, and here's another pass from Ryan Hancock. Way downfield for Sterling. He's got it. Can he keep his balance? If he does, he will score. He does score. What a catch by Otis Sterling. You'll never see a better effort. I like this guy. The wide out from Riverside, California. This is just a great play. It's a fade pattern. It's pretty well covered. How in the world does he keep his balance? I don't know. Somehow he does it. He was off balance when he caught it. <laughs> and yeah. it, it was, boy, it's a good thing he's as tall. What is Otis? He's 6'2", because he had to stretch to catch that one. This is a walk on. It just shows you, you know, just because you're not recruited, if you believe in yourself, it'll work. Big catch. Lauder kicks the extra point, his 23rd PAT of the year. And Brigham Young University, after being outplayed in the first half and down 21 to 7 at halftime. They now lead the Cowboys, Cowboys by a score of 24 to 21. It's worth another look as Hancock really airs it out. And Sterling stumbles, stumbles. The defender, Roan, is going to catch up with him. And yet Sterling with the long legs, and he is a long strider. Reminds me of Steve Watson, a guy who used to play for the Denver Broncos. There's some happy people as uh, they yeah. come out and scored 17 unanswered points. And Rome did everything you're supposed to do on that play. He caught up with him. He reached in, tried to knock the ball free. There's Otis Sterling, who is a lot in law school at Brigham Young University. He's a senior, but he's now in law school. Well, Brigham Young will kick off, and for the first time in the football game, the BYU Cougars lead.
They lead by three points with 2.11 to go in the third quarter. Jay Weller lining up. Let, let's mention a guy who has uh, really been something for Wyoming athletics. Today they honored Larry Berleffi. There's a plaque in the press box for Berleffi as they have now renamed this the Larry Berleffi uh, press box. And, uh, you know, this guy's been here about as long as, uh, quite frankly, you've been at BYU and everything, and he's just done a great job for the university. And, uh, you know, Larry, Larry was feeling pretty good for the game. Our, our congratulations. I, I agree with that. He was the voice of the Cowboys for many years. If you, uh, you know, knew anything or followed Wyoming at all, you knew Larry Berleffi. Here's the kickoff by Lauder. And again, there will be no return as he kicks it over that fence up by the scoreboard. The last two passes for Hancock, a 20-yard TD pass to Drage, a 68-yard TD pass to Sterling. And Sterling's got three for 104 yards now in this football game. See, Hancock, I think, now has nine TD passes on the season. Won't hurt his uh, pass efficiency rating at all. Scoring drive, uh, boy, didn't take long. Not, not really a drive. It was just a terrific effort by uh, the QB, Hancock, and the wideout, Sterling. Okay, the Cowboys will run on first round. They give it to Driver, and he does run. He's got 10. Nice slashing play off to the right side by Dwight Driver. Brad Clark hit him hard, but he got the 10. Coming right at you. Watch the block by Joe Walgren. As they get the chores done here, and Driver, who's been held in check most of the afternoon, one step away from breaking it. First down, Wyoming on their own 30-yard line. They now trail Brigham Young by three points. Driver's got 45 running yards in this game now. Hughes with two men wide to the left. That's going to cost Wyoming. Yep. That time it was a, if we called a right, or if we saw a right, I think that the lineman moved before the snap. Procedural penalty. Minute 49 to go in this third quarter. Cowboys last week scored 24 points. Is that correct? 25 points in the fourth quarter to beat New Mexico after they trailed most of the game. Now they have a first and 15 on their own 26 yard line with two men wide to the left. Hughes sends the motion man to the right. Here's the snap. He's back to pass. Does pass out that way and it's. Uh, it's cut at the 32 yard line. Where did he drop it? I think, I think Joe's about free. The catch. Now they're bringing it back, so it is incomplete. And that'll bring up second and 13. I don't know if he dropped it or he was on the line. I couldn't tell. Jones, uh, pretty reliable. Out of Rapid City, South Dakota. Once again, they recruit South Dakota effectively up here at the University of Wyoming. Just here it is. is. Oh, he, he never had it. it. Yep. It bounced. He caught it on the bounce, and I don't think they count. Wyoming not as sharp as they were that first half. They, I thought they were perfect. Second half, they've had a pick. They've had a couple of drops. Second and 15. Hughes back to throw. Does throw. It's caught this time. He'll be down at the 34-yard line. Completed the pass to his tight end, Matt Swenson, and Brad Clark took his feet out from under him. The Cowboys will face third down. All right, here it is. Swenson, the big guy who played a lot of hockey in the state of Minnesota. It's a turnout pattern. BYU They're playing down in distance, and they do a good job there because now it's third, and you got to pick up seven here as we look at Joe Tiller. Joe, an outstanding lineman. Line of scrimmage, the 34 yard line of the Cowboys. Brigham Young ahead by four now, with less than a minute to go in the third quarter. Ahead by three, I should say, with less than a minute to go in the third quarter. Here's Hughes to throw for a first down. He's going to run it. Can he get it? Nope. He was stopped before he could uh, reach first down yardage. So the BYU defense has stopped them again, led by Todd Hergett. And Christensen, the uh, nickelback, gives him some help. So Wyoming apparently will have to punt the football. Lose their passing lanes. Coverage was good downfield out of the nickel package. And Hughes is not very fast. But uh, he takes a pretty good look, uh, look there by Hergett. Chris Mindlin is in to punt. And he will be kicking from around his own 20 yard line for BYU. The deep man is Johnston. This young man's done a good job hanging on to the football for BYU. Mike Johnston, who's only a freshman, a wide receiver, too. The quarter ends before they get the kick underway. And so, after three complete quarters of football, it is now Brigham Young University 24, the University of Wyoming 21. This is the Blue and White Sports Network. 
No car wax can save this car's paint job, right? Color Key Car Wax can. Color Key is the original car wax that comes in colors to match your car. Color Key's unique color process helps hide nicks, scratches, and swirl marks. Just look at these scratch marks disappear. Look, even dried on spray paint disappears with Color Key. Color Key's easy to use. Just wipe on and wipe off. Looks like a new paint job without the cost. Color Key's durable finish protects your car against oxidation, extreme temperatures, acids, and other corrosive elements for up to one full year. Color Key is the original color car wax so effective it was granted a U.S. patent. Color Key is guaranteed or your money back. Call the toll-free number now. Tell the operator the color and make of your car and we'll double the size of your full 8-ounce bottle to a giant 16-ounce bottle. But that's not all. You'll also receive our exclusive leather and vinyl protector and our super concentrated car wash. Want more? How about a second 16-ounce bottle in any color absolutely free? You get everything here for just $19.95. Call now. To order, use your credit card and call toll-free 1-800-842-7900. That's 1-800-842-7900. Call now. The American dream is alive and well. You'll find the American spirit in the way we work, the way we play, and in all of Shiloh Inn's people, dedicated to offering you affordable excellence in the American tradition of hospitality. A new 92 or a new 93 Ford, it's your choice, but the deals are at Gresham Ford. Over 350 new cars and trucks ready for immediate delivery. These new extended length aero stores with seven passenger seating, V6 engine, tilt cruise and factory air, all at $4,000 savings. New 92 F-250 pickups with XLT Lariat trim, factory air, power windows and locks, cruise and tilt, all at $12,992. Pay $217 per month with 20% down. That's Brian Bickmore's Gresham Ford, where we rent cars for $15 per day. Jay Monson, Irv Brown, we go to the fourth quarter of the game. The Cowboys will punt. Irv, we can give Otis Sterling a 10 for balance <laughs> on that touchdown he scored. He could, uh, he could handle it on the beam. Midland, Midland will kick from the 23-yard line. Johnston is back on his own 21-yard line for BYU. Cougars lead 24-21 as we open the fourth quarter here in Laramie, and it's getting overcast now. Here's the kick with the wind. Johnston does not call for fair catch, takes it back around the 15. And we'll get out to the 17 or 18 yard line. That kick really carried. There's a flag that goes down after the play. Somebody threw a punch. That was very, very late. Unnecessary roughness should be the call. Just not sure who they, well, it's on BYU. So it'll be half the distance. Blocking in the back is the call. So the uh, BYU team will really be in the hole now. Statistically, the Cougars now ahead in passing yards. Neither team. <laughs> Anything to write home about when it comes to rushing yardage in this game? Yeah, for, for a couple of ball clubs, as you look at score by quarters, that have really been able to, uh, to run it on the, and do the job. Look at BYU in the third period, though. It's quite an effort. 47 yard punt, a two yard return. And with the penalty marked off, the Cougars, the line of scrimmage will be the nine yard line. First and 10, Brigham Young from their own nine yard line. And they have not been able to get anything going with a running game. Neither is Wyoming. Field position favoring the Cowboys at this point with the Cougars in a three point lead and uh, the inside handoff Jay. Hey Hancock will go back in the shotgun and that's it. It's a sweep with Jamal Willis. Jamal bangs his way forward for, for three yards. Tackled by Kramer and Marcellus. Just don't have that real quickness today to to make it work against Fresno State. Everything was quick. Boom boom. And it just hasn't happened. You have days like that. Gain on the play of two. Make it second and eight for the Brighams on their own 11-yard line. They're ahead by three, as you see there. And we're just starting the fourth quarter. The wind favors Wyoming in this game right now. BYU has to kick. They'll kick into a pretty strong wind. Now they'll sweep to the right side. Willis trying to turn the corner. He's got a lot of room this time. And he's all the way out to the 24-yard line, but there's also a flag down back in the BYU backfield. I think they got Rex or Broomfield. Roan made the hit, but the penalty will be on BYU, and instead of Willis getting a first down, the Cougars are really going to be in the hole. And remember what we said, they'll have to kick into a strong wind now. 
if uh, punting down comes up. It's still second down for Brigham Young, but now the uh, line of scrimmage is the two and a half yard line. And they have to get out to the 19 yard line for a first down. Here comes Otis Sterling into the football game, brings a play in for Ryan Hancock. Sterling had uh, just a fantastic effort. Not only the touchdown catch, he had a crossing pattern that was special a little earlier in the quarter. He's wide to the left for BYU, Drage is wide to the right. And it's a running play up the middle. Jamal Willis breaks a tackle and fights his way forward to the nine yard line. What a spin and a, and a, and a limp leg move he puts on at the line of scrimmage. He was stacked up using the spin and the limp leg. Watch him break it. This is an athlete. He's been very good all year long. Here's the contact right there. Boom, spins, limp leg. Picks up five yards. Ty Hopkins tackled him. Brigham Young with a third and ten call then from their own nine yard line. They sent three men wide to the right, one to the left. Hancock out of the shotgun. He's got the ball. Throwing from the end zone, dancing around. Here's the pass. Almost intercepted. I could say should have been intercepted. Intended for Bryce Doman, who was sick during the first half, but he was out there on that play. Junior Marcellus had an interception and dropped it. Threw it into the wind, much like Hughes did, and the ball floats. Now, take a look at this. This could have been six. Junior Marcellus has perfect position, and the ball floats. Oh, Doman, boy, Doman you. was open, too. And Well, they turn it over to Brad Hunter then to see if he can kick into the wind and get him out of trouble. He'll kick from about six yards in the end zone. <laughs> Biggest pair of pads I've ever seen on a kicker. <laughs> <laughs> he got it away. And it's a pretty good one against that win. Bounces at the 50, takes a BYU bounce to the 45-yard line. And Roan keeps backing up, and finally they gang up on him and knock him out of bounds around the 43-yard line. University of Wyoming will take over then near midfield, trading BYU by three. This is the Blue and White Sports Network. Ten Powerball explodes with head on. High impact football. The West Coast top stars turn up the heat. Cutting for glory in the nation's most rugged conference. Pac 10 football. It's a hit. This season's Pac 10 football on Prime Sports Northwest is brought to you by Dairy Queen. We treat you right. And by Milgard Windows. Guaranteed for life. Coming to a volume dealer is beneficial to the customer because when a dealer is focused on volume, the customer is most likely to get a lower price for the car. Uh, I think you'll find that normally um, our prices are the most competitive, uh, the most consistently low in the market. And that's why we sell so many cars. It really works. When life's little interruptions slow you down, Scotty's Auto Body and Repair for a quick pick-me-up. Scotty's Auto Body has expanded to carry out complete service and maintenance on all kinds of cars. Our expert mechanics can handle anything from a quick oil change to a complete engine overhaul. And at Scotty's, we treat your car as though it were our own. We won't tell you you need something you don't. Scotty's Auto Body, if they can't fix your car, nobody can. Real credit kicking into the wind. He got away a 47 yard punt and a minus one yard return. Three men wide to the left of the Cowboys on first down from their own 43 yard line. They'll run it. Hold to the left side, a gain of two, maybe three yards as it was a handoff. Is that Hendricks back in there for them? The tackle by Lenny Gomes. Yeah, that's Terrence Hendricks who carried the ball. Interestingly enough, they run to the left side. That's where their trips formation was set up. Everybody was downfield rolling at people's feet. Hoping that this guy can break uh, break something and have uh, clear sailing. And it was see. Shad Hansen who got him. Let's see what kind of pass Hughes throws now. Second down, six, maybe seven yards to go for a first down for the Cowboys on their own 47. 
big defensive uh, situation for BYU in this game. They'll pitch reverse. it. They're running reverse. That's Yarborough with the ball. He's trying to get wide to the outside, but BYU has him contained, and he'll be dropped back on the 42-yard line. It didn't fool anybody, although there was some good blocking. Kevin Nickel did not make the tackle, but Kevin Nickel prevented this thing from going. Watch who screws up the timing. 55 really forces a deep, and that lets Herget make the play. Watch 55 right there. Forced it too deep. Well covered. You got to have somebody always trailing when you play defense if people will run a reverse. And that's a big loss. Got to throw it now, third and 11. Third down for the Cowboys. They're back on their own 42 yard line. They put uh, three men wide to the right. Uh, this one had his eye on Miss Patty. No. And he's dancing around. Can he find anybody? He gets the pass off, completes it, but it's not enough for the first down. McCullough covering for BYU, and the pass completed to Terrence Green. So now the Cowboys have a decision. It's midfield. They're down by three. They face fourth down and four, maybe three. Dances out of this. Finds a little bit of a seam. Looks like he's going to run. McCullough stays at home where they got big yardage. And they bring the, they're bringing the kicker in. They talked about it, Irv. I think they thought about should we go for it. They're kicking with 